How do Stargate addresses work? There are three types of addresses that a traveller can dial. The first is a standard intergalactic 7 chevron address. The second is an extra galactic 8 chevron address. And the third is an unspecified distance 9 chevron address. The 7 chevron address. The standard 7 symbol address is used in the Milky Way and Pegasus Stargate networks, which occupy two separate galaxies. A Milky Way Stargate has a total of 39 symbols. 38 of these symbols are identical across all gates, with the exception being with the 39th symbol. This is referred to as the point of origin and is used to identify each gate within the dialing network. For example, at one point Earth had two Stargates that could be distinguished by their point of origin symbols. They were named the Alpha Gate and the Beta Gate. Ironically, the Beta Gate was actually the original Stargate on Earth that had become lost thousands of years prior. And so Stargate Command had no idea that the Stargate they found in Egypt was actually the second one placed on Earth. Each Stargate is accompanied by what is known as a dial home device, which share the same symbols as its connected gate. Although symbols situated on both a Stargate and a DHD are permanently moulded onto the gate, Stargates and DHDs can be swapped from planet to planet without causing problems for the network. If two gates are present on one planet, the one connected to a DHD will take the role of the main gate and will receive all incoming wormholes. When an address is dialed, the Stargate isn't actually sending the wormhole to the location of the receiving gate, but is actually sending it to the location of the planet it should be on. If someone had swapped a gate from an alien world with the one on Earth, the address back to Earth would connect with the alien gate instead of wherever the Earth gate was now located. So travellers are essentially dialing the planet, not the gate. The address system within a galaxy works by using seven symbols from the gate's glyph ring. Let's say I wanted to dial back home to Earth. I would press the first six symbols for Earth in order, and would then scan the DHD to locate a symbol I hadn't seen before. This would be the point of origin glyph, which is the planet's identifier, as well as the final symbol for the address. Once it's selected, I then press the big red button in the centre of the DHD, and the gate activates. Just to recap, the first six symbols for a planet is the static address that never changes, with the seventh and final symbol, the point of origin, being a form of confirmation that the address is complete and you can press the big red button. The Pegasus Stargate network uses the same dialing system. You input the first six symbols and then locate the point of origin. There are differences between the two networks, but it's mainly cosmetic. The first is the symbols themselves, they look more like constellations, and the second being the symbol number with the total amount only being 36 symbols instead of 39 seen in the Milky Way network. The 8 chevron address. An 8 symbol address is used when travelling between galaxies. When inputting, it's the same as a standard address, but with an added glyph before the point of origin. An extra component is required in the form of energy. Due to the vast distance between galaxies, the dialing stargate must receive a boost so the wormhole can reach the destination gate. This can be in many forms, but it's most commonly seen as a ZPM. These rare addresses have only been used a few times in the show. First being from Earth to the Ida Galaxy. This occurred when Jack had ancient knowledge forced into his mind, causing his subconscious to create a power source capable of powering the extra galactic address. It took him to the Asgard homeworld Othala, where he received help and was sent back to Earth using another 8 symbol address. The second was when Thor dialed directly from Ida to Earth, to ask for help regarding a major threat. The third was when Stargate Command discovered an 8 chevron address to an ancient city called Atlantis, situated in the Pegasus Galaxy, and is home to the Pegasus Gate Network mentioned previously. Stargate Command used a nearly depleted ZPM to reach Atlantis, at which point the module was completely empty, meaning the expedition team was stranded in another galaxy. The Pegasus Network is unique when it comes to extra galactic addresses. While the Milky Way and Ida gates can dial any gate that has a corresponding 8 symbol address, only the Stargate in Atlantis is capable of accepting or dialing these rare addresses. This was a safety measure in the form of a DHD crystal, designed to stop anyone from Pegasus reaching other galaxies. The 9 Chevron address. This is where all previous address knowledge gets thrown out the window. We have only ever seen two 9 Chevron addresses before. The first is from Milky Way to Destiny, and the second is from Destiny back to the Milky Way. The power requirements for the address to Destiny were astronomical, with a planet that had an Aquadria core being used. 
The big difference between a 7 or 8 symbol address is that a 9 symbol one actually dials directly to a stargate, instead of where a stargate should be. A standard gate dial works by sending a subspace burst to a specific region of space, and if a gate is there it will form a wormhole connection. A 9 symbol gate dial sends out a subspace burst in all directions until the desired gate receives the wave. It then sends another burst back to the dialing gate with its current position in space, to which the dialing gate forms a connection. This is how destiny could be dialed even though its position in space could not be predicted the same way that planets can, as they have a stable orbit through the universe while destiny is a free roaming ship. This is also why all models of stargates have 9 chevrons instead of just 7 or 8. It has not been confirmed, but it's widely believed that every stargate has a unique 9 symbol address that will allow an incoming wormhole no matter where it is in the galaxy or wider universe. The dialing scene from Destiny back to Earth somewhat shows this idea in motion. Destiny inputs a 9 chevron address back to Earth, and it's more likely that Earth's exact position was pinged back to Destiny, rather than Destiny having kept track of Earth's stellar position for over 50 million years. A 9 chevron address doesn't necessarily need a lot of power, it was only destiny being so far away that made the Icarus type planet a requirement. A regular DHD should be able to directly connect two gates within the same galaxy if the 9 symbol address between them is known. Another aspect of a 9 symbol connection we see is a traveller's exit pattern. No matter the speed of entry, all travellers were ejected from the receiving gate at high velocity. Destiny is so far away that the traveller's velocity patterns became distorted by the time it reached Destiny, forcing them to be shot out of the gate. Stargates just are not designed to be used at that great a distance, so it makes sense that the wormhole interference due to distance or the insane amount of power is to blame. There is precedence for this idea in SG-1, when Sam Carter turns off some gate protocols to get a lock on a sealed off world. The wormhole itself travels through a sun affected area of subspace, causing their velocity patterns to become altered, shooting them out of the destination gate. Something similar could have happened to the Icarus to Destiny connection, altering the wormhole traveller's pattern. 